Hi everyone, I'm Charlie, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I went from a thrill-seeking stunt rider to a ministry-minded evangelist. So, welcome to my channel. And as you can see, I used to be pretty crazy on my street bike back in the day. At that time, I was actually active duty Air Force stationed at Effie Warren Air Force Base in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I had some of the most amazing friends and many of them I still keep in contact with to this day. I was into the partying scene, clubs, girls, cars, whatever was fun, I was down. I was all about seeking a thrill no matter what was involved. But then there was this airman named Joseph. And because of the nature of our job and being in the missile field for multiple days at a time, we spent quite a bit of time together. And he seemed quite strange to me. He didn't talk much and he really kept to himself. I thought he was either angry or maybe he was just really shy. But eventually, I witnessed him watching Christian television and I thought this was really weird. I didn't know what these shows were at first. They seemed strange, but he was always watching them. One day, while we were sitting there just talking and doing our work, he asked me, do you go to church? And I responded, no, but I'm Catholic. I think at that point, he really left it alone. But at a later time, he came back and asked, have you been born again? And really, while I don't remember exactly what I said in response, I know that I had no idea what he was talking about, nor had I ever heard that. And in a way, I believe that I responded similarly to how Nicodemus did to Jesus when Jesus was trying to explain to him that you must be born again. This is found in John chapter 3, verses 3 through 7, where Nicodemus says, How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked, Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. In verse 5, Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. After contemplating these words of Jesus and watching the Left Behind movies with Joseph in the missile field, which actually star Kurt Cameron and are about the rapture, I continued to contemplate what salvation and God was really all about. I also began to understand something that I had not before. Although at the time I really couldn't put this into words because I didn't really understand the scriptures, I started to realize that salvation cannot be earned, it's a free gift. This is outlined in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 which is actually on my hat. It says that we're saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves. It's the free gift of God so no one can boast. Although my understanding of this concept and theory by faith are not nearly as clear as they are now, it started to make sense in my mind. You see, I started to gain faith because I started to hear the word. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This Bible passage is actually in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. I actually started attending a few Bible studies with Joseph and as I heard the word and believed the word, faith continued to increase. 
Shortly after that, a very close friend of mine named Jeremy gave his life to Jesus and got saved and born again as I continued to wrestle with whether or not I wanted to make this decision and if I even could live the way that Joseph did. You see, Joseph wasn't a hypocrite. He would come to our drinking parties, but he wouldn't drink. If I remember correctly, he would actually put some kind of juice in the cups that he had to drink. And then when the parties got out of control, he would just leave. He wouldn't judge us. He loved us right where we were at. Another aspect that blew my mind, especially while being a young man, is that Joseph would not sleep with his girlfriend. Despite attempts from her to do so with him, he would not. And in my mind, I thought, how can he do this? How can he abstain from alcohol? How can he abstain from having sex? How can he do that? I thought, well, either he's really good at controlling what he does externally, or this is some type of supernatural salvation. And maybe if it works for him, it will work for me. Maybe this new life that he was living was actually giving him some type of power to live holy, pure, and set apart. And maybe this was the aspect and the element that was so critical that I was missing out on. But was it real? Was it true? Or was he somehow practicing some type of behavior modification? After some time of contemplation, I ended up with one of my best friends from Colorado named JP at a junior dragster competition, racing my Eagle Talon and also racing some Z28 Camaros. My Talon ended up running a 14.2 and at the end of the day, I ended up winning a trophy in the family and friends category for having the fastest Camaro. And after coming home and continuing to contemplate being born again, I thought, well, what do I have to lose? I really want to try this. So after deleting a bunch of garbage off my computer, which you can imagine what that was, even though you can't clean yourself up before you come to God, I called Joseph and said, Joseph, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. Tell me what I need to do. Well, Joseph had me open up my Bible. He had me go through the book of Romans. He actually led me down what is called the Romans road of salvation. I got my Bible open. He brought me to Romans 3, chapter 23, where it says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Romans 6, 23, where it says, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And then Romans 10, 9, that says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And in Romans 10, verse 10, it says, for with the heart a man believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made, resulting in salvation. Now I want to clarify that I always believed in God and in Jesus in my head conceptually. I actually was brought up as a Catholic in New England and always believed in God in my head. But I believe it never connected to my heart where it really matters, just as that scripture explained that I just read to you in Romans chapter 10 verse 9. So after going over those scriptures with Joseph and actually writing them down and thinking about all these aspects of faith, that I've sinned, that I've made mistakes, that I need God's forgiveness, that I need Him, that I need Jesus. After writing down those scriptures and acknowledging that I've sinned, that I need to repent, turn towards God. In turning towards God, I'm turning my back on sin. I'm turning my back on the world. I'm giving my life to Jesus as he gives his life to me. After I did those things, I prayed through these scriptures. 
I said, God, I need you. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe you rose from the dead on my behalf. Lord, come into my life. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. I'm a sinner in need of your grace, of your mercy, of your forgiveness, Lord Jesus. At that moment, I prayed and I asked God's forgiveness. I confessed him as my personal Lord and Savior. And at that moment, I felt nothing. Nothing happened. Not everyone experiences something tangible when they come to Jesus. But once I did that, I said, Lord, that's it. I don't believe that it happened and I'm not really sure. So I said, God, I really need you. I really need you and I really believe what I said. And the moment that I did that, whoosh, I felt the Holy Spirit wash over me. It was like somebody took warm oil and poured it all over my head. And from that moment, I knew that I was saved. I knew that I was born again. I knew that I was right with God and that it wasn't by works. It was by faith, not by works. I was so excited. I was telling Joseph, wow, I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel like I'm floating inside of me. It was the most euphoric sense. I don't even want to say feeling. It was the most euphoric sense I had ever, I had ever experienced. And Joseph said, that's the Holy Spirit. Praise Him, give Him glory, worship Him, sing songs to Him, hallelujah. At that time, I actually knew very little about the Bible, about Jesus, and even about salvation. You see, salvation is not complicated. It's very simple, but it's also very, very deep and goes into huge depth as you study theology. But the one thing I did know is that I was changed supernaturally from the inside out and then I would never, ever be the same again. And from that point forward, I made a vow to God, to Jesus, to tell people the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ and how simple and easy it is to be saved. But what happened after that? How did I become a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, shortly thereafter, probably about five months later, I ended up having a permanent change of duty station to Tucson, Arizona which is where I currently live now. The Lord directed me to a spirit-filled church. I met my beautiful bride at my church in 2010. And in 2011, we were married and we now have four amazing kids who are the most amazing blessings a father could ever ask for. The Lord directed me to a spirit-filled church where I served, once promoted, to a position of associate pastor and youth pastor really within six years of getting to my church. And how did I get to that point? Well, when I found my church, I just knew, I knew, knew, knew that I needed to serve, that I needed to be a blessing, that I needed to just help the body of Christ in whatever capacity and whatever way that I could. Well, I served in varying capacities, reading and ushering in the church, to teaching a new believers class, to leading a life group in my home with my wife, to leading evangelistic outreach events with my church where we go door to door preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But recently, through a bunch of different events that have happened and the leading of the Lord, God has been guiding me to step back from my position and move on to what He is calling me specifically to do. I am an instrument of God. I am a vessel of the Lord. All glory, honor, and praise goes to Jesus. Without Him, I'm nothing. He is no respecter of persons, and what He does for one, He'll do for all. I often doubt myself and my abilities, which I'm sure all of you do as well, but God is calling each of us and each of you to step out into what God has specifically called you to do. He needs your voice. He needs the uniqueness of your gifts, talents, and abilities to be utilized for the kingdom of God in the way that He sees fit. The Bible says that today, if you hear His voice, 
do not harden your hearts. For behold, today is the day of salvation. And maybe you don't know that you're right with God. Maybe you're not sure that if today were your last day on the planet, that you would make heaven your home. Well, you can be sure of that today. If you believe that Jesus died for you, stepped out of heaven, came to earth, and died your death in your place, took your penalty and your sin so you could go free, so you could have His eternal perfect life and He'll take your sin, take your death, take your sickness, take your disease, and take everything, every aspect of failure and sin. In fact, He already took it 2,000 years ago on the cross. All you have to do is receive the reality of what Jesus did for you on the cross 2,000 years ago and then rose from the dead. And if you want to receive the free gift that God has for you today, if you want to receive the life of Jesus, if you want to be born again of the Spirit of God, if you're ready for God to separate your sins as far as the East is from the West, to take away your heart of stone and to give you a heart of flesh, to make you a brand new creature, just pray this prayer out loud with me and believe it in your heart. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. I believe that you died for me in my place, took my penalty and took my sin. And then on the third day, you rose again. I believe that you're alive, that you've risen from the grave. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I turn towards you, Jesus. And in doing so, I turn away from my sins. I turn my back on sin, sickness, and disease. I turn my back on the world and I turn towards you. I give you my life, Lord Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you that I'm a new creature and that I will never be the same. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a hunger for the things of God and I will never be the same. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, hallelujah. Glory to God. Find a good church. Find a spirit-filled Holy Ghost Church and plug yourself into the body of Christ. Build holy relationships that will hold you accountable to do what God has called you to do. I bless you in Jesus' mighty name and we'll see you next time for my next video. Amen.